Yo, what is up guys, it's Accept here and welcome back to another video. So I haven't uploaded in a while and pretty much it's because I've been really busy. I've been getting into coaching, both individual and team coaching, so that's been taking up a lot of my time. And pretty much the free time I've had, I've either like just taken a rest or I've been streaming. So I haven't really had time for YouTube, but I really want to get back into it because I find it a lot of fun. And now that I have more time, I'm gonna start doing more YouTube videos. So, for the foreseeable future, you can expect more content on this channel. I'm also planning on getting a new microphone pretty soon. I mean, the one I'm using right now is fairly old and also it's not the highest quality, so I kind of want to get a new one. Um, so I'm gonna get that soon, but either way, enough of the rambling, I'm gonna get straight into this video. So today we're gonna be going through a guide on how to play Vi top lane. So some of you guys might think I'm trolling by saying this, um, but I'm gonna be playing Vi top lane now for the pretty much the entire preseason. Um, in around D2 to Master MMR, um, but I think it's pretty good. It has one of the best setups in the game pretty much with her ult and Q. Um, she also has the luxury of being able to run Ignite and she deals a lot of damage in short trades. On top of all of this, she also abuses lethal tempo really well, which is a pretty good rune right now, or pretty overpowered rune even, I would say. Now talking about runes, I think we should get straight into them. Um, I pretty much always go lethal tempo right now. I think it's a pretty overpowered rune in general, especially on bruisers that auto attack a lot. Um, a Vi fits into this category pretty well, I would say. So I think it's a pretty good rune in general. Um, if you don't want to go with lethal tempo, you can also go with electrocute. I think it synergizes with her short trades really well and overall just her kit. Um, but lethal tempo is really overtuned right now. I would just recommend going this pretty much 99% of the time. For the rest of the runes in the precision tree, I usually go with Triumph and then Bloodline and then Last Stand. Sometimes, or pretty often, I would swap out Bloodline for Tenacity instead. Um, reason being, it kind of depends on how much CC the enemy team comp has. Um, if they don't have a lot of CC, I will just pretty much always go Bloodline because you don't really build a lot of lifesteal with Vi. It, you can't really fit it into her build. Um, so having the out of combat lifesteal is pretty nice as well. For secondary runes, I really like going with so Resolve. Shield Bash works really well on you, and then you can just either go second wind or bone plating, depending on the matchup, and you can also go on flinching. Once again, if the enemy team has a lot of CC, then this is a pretty good option. Depending on if you think bone plating or second wind is really necessary in your lane, you can either swap out one of those two or a shield bash for down flinching when enemies have a lot of CC. If you don't want to go resolve secondary, then you can also go with domination, and then you go sudden impact and ravenous hunter. Revenant Hunter is actually pretty nice because what it does is it allows you to lifesteal out of combat so you don't actually need Bloodline and you can go Tenacity instead. Um, but in general I just kind of prefer going on the flinching and then going with Bloodline either way. Because that way you can't really get CC'd and you don't need to run Tenacity and I think Bloodline is just better than Revenant Hunter in general. And I also think Second Wind or Bone Plating if you play one of those or even Shield Bash is better in general than Sudden Impact, but it's up to your preference and how hard you think you can snowball. With the stat runes, I would first recommend going Adaptive Force instead of Attack Speed. Um, the reason for this is pretty much you already get Attack Speed from Lethal Tempo and also your passive, um, so you don't really need it in trades. Um, the only good thing could be that you get Attack Speed on Mini Waves as well, a lot more, and also on Towers, which could be pretty nice, but I don't think it's as necessary as having the Adaptive Force. Then I would recommend going Adaptive Force again, and then for the last rune, I would recommend going HP. The reason for this is that HP actually scales really nicely right now, and unless you're playing into a really AD or MR heavy champion, I would just recommend going in it in general. It also scales on your passive, so that's pretty nice. In general, this is pretty much all I play right now on the Vi top lane. Um, you can feel free to go something else if you really like it, um, but this is what I'm gonna be playing for now on. So the builds on top lane Vi are kinda weird because there's nothing really set in stone. I would pretty much always go Divine Sunder as the first item, but the second item is a bit more weird. Um, I think you can default into Sturax if you want to, and then like just go Gargoyle into a kinda tank bruisery style. Um, but if the enemy team has a lot of tanks or a lot of bruisers, then you can also go Black Cleaver second, that's completely alright. If the enemy team has a lot of APs, and a lot of APs you're gonna be fighting, then Witsend is pretty good as well. If you don't really know when to take which option, then it's fine to use Default into Divine Sunder, into Sturax. It pretty much always works and there's no real flaw to the build. Right here I have listed three builds that I think are pretty optimal on Vi, but if you don't know which one to take when, just take the top one pretty much always and default into it. There's no real problem with that. Next up I want to talk about how to actually play Vi top lane so that we understand what the champion does and how to play her both in the early game and then later on into the game. So for level 1 we're gonna want to start Q 
Q is the strongest tool that we can use when trading and pretty much what we want to do level 1 is Q towards the enemy, charge it up as much as possible and then go for an auto attack if we hit it, if we don't we just back off. Either way we're gonna get a shield on around 100 HP so it's kinda hard for our opponent to trade back most of the time unless you're playing against a ranged champion. In that case it's also fine to start E just to get the shield. When we later on hit level 2 and 3 we're gonna want to do the same combo, Q forward and then auto attack but we also wanna cancel our next auto attack with E. This way we get a maximum amount of damage out as possible without the opponent being able to trade back. If we miss our Q then it's fine to still go for an E because we're gonna get a shield just from that. Just don't extend the trade afterwards. These combos deal a lot of damage and can easily chunk out your opponent and if you do them often enough and actually hit them then if you run ignite like I do it's gonna be pretty easy to find a solo kill. When we later on reach level 6 it's fine to extend the all-ins and actually ult so that you can get lethal temp procs without the enemy being able to, this way you can trade on them really easily afterwards as well and you can easily look for kills yourself. Also ping your jungler when you're level 6 to come top lane because it's really easy to set up ganks with my. If you don't think you can kill the enemy top lane then it's fine to roam mid after you push out the wave with your ult because it's really easy as I said to set up ganks but it's also really easy to gank with Vi. So don't be afraid to roam when you see the opportunity to. Later on into the game you're gonna play like pretty much any other bruiser, you're gonna want to split push as much as possible, but if you see a fight starting to brew up then it's completely alright to move for it. In the fights your role kind of matters on what the enemy team comp is, what your team comp is and a lot of stuff. If the enemy team comp has a lot of dive then it might be a good idea to peel. If you're the fed person then you play for your own interests, if your ADC is fed then play for her interests, you get my point. Also don't be scared to look for fights when you reach your core items. Your champion is pretty strong, especially in 1v1s. So if you reach your core items, just look to fight, and even if you don't know if you win or not, you're gonna find out afterwards. Like, don't be afraid to limit test, because otherwise you're not gonna learn. If you want to learn more limits on Vi, then also you can check out my Twitch down below. I play her a lot over there, so it's an easy way to learn just looking at someone else play her. Otherwise, this was it for this video. Um, if you guys want to see more guides or a more in-depth guide, then just tell me down below and leave a like. It kind of tells me on what I should be doing. Otherwise, just follow me on my socials if you want to, subscribe over here. I appreciate it a lot and it means a lot. Anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.